Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. We're joined today on Share Talk by Paul Johnson, Metal NRG, on the next exchange. You okay, Paul? Yes, absolutely fine, Alex. How are you? It's nice to catch up with you again. Well, it's been a little while, but we've been uh, beavering away in the background, as always. I know every time I try and contact you, you're always in the bush. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hiding. I know you're not. You're it's always, just, you're always it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been quite busy. Well, I've always adopted the ethos that if you want to uh, get things done, you want to do transactions and so on, then you've got to get out and about and meet people. It's no, it's no use just being sat behind a, a computer in a desk all day long. So we, we, we've been really... Uh, getting around a lot and seeing lots of different people and new opportunities. And we, we've made some serious progress, which has been kind of evidenced from the first announcement that we made uh, with Metal Energy related to cobalt. You said coal, cobalt, copper, lithium and uranium, but cobalt, why, why the interest in that? Well, <clears throat> be, because... We're, we're a small company listed on what some people would consider to be a lower tier exchange, the next exchange. Now, I would say, of course, as when we chatted at Mass, uh, so UK Investor back yeah. in April, that the next exchange is lining itself up to be the resource exploration exchange. Uh, it's certainly in the UK and maybe uh, on a wider basis because the, the larger exchanges like AIM have really gone cold on new resource exploration IPOs and uh, uh, RTOs. They uh, they want the big mining projects that are already in production and so on. So, But Next is saying, hey, we, we, will, we will look at exploration plays we, and they're building a resource business. So... Uh, what I wanted to make sure, though, because because we are on Next and because we are a new company, we have to capture the market's attention. Now, amongst the energy metals and minerals that we're focused on, the one uh, metal that stands out dramatically uh, from the whole lot is cobalt, based on the price movements of, uh, of recent times. Uh, a year or so ago, the price of cobalt was 24,000 US dollars a ton, and it's more than doubled over the last year. The supply de demand dynamics going forward are very favorable for the price to continue to remain high, and potentially, some people think it's going a lot higher. Uh, so that's the kind of area where we want to be focused. I, I wouldn't like to get involved with cobalt if it was just a two week wonder, uh, but it's have been very, very positive for quite some time now. And as I say, the forward supply demand dynamics look like it may well stay that way for quite some time. I think a lot of people realise what cobalt's used for. They don't realise it's in high demand. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially the big thing that seems to drive it at the moment is the battery technology. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and and obviously that's appearing all over and, and growing in terms of, uh, in terms of demand. So uh, we... Unlike certain other commodities that tend to have these temporary, you know, major, major spikes in price, uh, there is a, a really interesting forward supply demand dynamic that, that, that could uh, really, really uh, uh, help the price going forward. So uh, if you look at Australia, Australia's had a little bit of a, uh, a cobalt kind of boom. Uh, if you... Uh, if you look at the UK, typically uh, it tends to track behind in terms of the market, track behind these major booms. We certainly track behind the lithium blowout and we're tracking behind the uh, the cobalt blowout. So I, I think there's space in the markets for uh, small market capitalization companies focusing on some of these uh, very exciting commodities that go into exciting technologies. So that's really where we're moving ourselves right now. Not being disrespectful, it's like grassroots again. It's, you're restarting from scratch, for better use of a word. What, being stuck in the office at 10 past seven with no one uh, you know, here no all by myself? <laughs> yeah, just me and Lady Gaga. No, it's just, you know, you obviously, you, you pass... Oh, I didn't tell you about Lady Gaga before. That's my, that's my secret. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. No, it, yeah. it, it is. It's like MTR in the uh, early-ish days when, yeah. when we were try, desperately trying to build the business. 
and, and looking at lots of different opportunities. So we are uh, uh, kind of at it again, or I'm at it again, uh, in terms of building this this business from ground up. But, uh, this is the exciting point, really. This is where you decide in the future of the company. You're bringing on projects, working with some good people on the board. As you know, uh, I've got Christopher Latila Campbell, the chairman, who's uh, super enthusiastic, been involved with the company for 10 years. Uh, Christian Shafaletsky from uh, Kibo Mining and Eurasia uh, Mining. And then also, of course, Mr. Heddle from Greatland Gold. So we've got a great team on MNRG, uh, and it's starting to build now a lot of momentum. You've got a good team around you. I know Mr. Heddle well, and I've met him. He's, he's doing really well at the moment, as you know, with Gretel and Gold. So mm. where, where do you, so at the moment, are you going to look, what, what's the company going to look at? So you're going to concentrate on Cobalt, or are you looking at other assets? Well, at the moment, we've got a pipeline of, of different things, but the one that tends to stand out the most is the Cobalt pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> so I... Uh, it's we we I've got to be careful what I say. I think uh, there is a very strong argument that uh, w- we perhaps should focus on cobalt because we've had lots of feedback from people who've seen our initial cobalt transaction. There isn't really a cobalt focus small cap company on the uh, London markets uh, that people can focus on. Uh, we, I've watched my uh, my former mining maven colleague Malcolm Pale with Coincilium, taking that company from a first placing of a penny a few months ago all the way up to currently four and a half pence, and yeah. he's done it because that business is blockchain focused. The price of Bitcoin, not exactly the same thing, but the the price of Bitcoin has gone up a lot. A lot of interest in blockchain companies, and people have been driven to buy his shares on Next. In our case, uh, we want the similar kind of effect. So if we created a cobalt-focused business, uh, there isn't much competition for us. And we could create a scenario where people are driven to buy the stock on Next, which is exactly what you want to create that demand and drive the price higher. So possibly we might focus on cobalt, yeah. Because I'm looking there, I can see the connection with Australia, the cobalt exploration in your last R and S, and yeah. So I can, I can, well, I'm looking at the connection there. I don't know if I'm making the right connection. Well, we we we're going uh, at the moment. We're looking uh, obviously Australia. We're looking to expand what we've started in Australia from a cobalt perspective. We're looking at properties in uh, the U.S., uh, United States for cobalt uh we're looking at uh canada for cobalt uh all safe jurisdictions and that's interesting because a lot uh from a cobalt perspective there's a lot of focus on the uh, drc uh and there's a bit of concern about the supply chain uh from a cobalt perspective from that part of the world yeah exactly uh so we we think that that uh Good quality cobalt opportunities in safe jurisdictions is probably a very good way to go. And and certainly we hope that uh, if that ultimately transpires, perhaps that we do focus on the cobalt side of things for a while. Uh, We hope and think that that will drive people to to take a look at our shares and potentially buy a few, which is the game, of course, is to get, uh, you know, the share trading as quickly as possible. What would you say about the next exchange? Because <clears throat> people are always complaining it's hard for them to press a button basically to buy. What would you say about that? Oh, well, that's changing because more and more brokers uh, will be coming online so they can, people can buy online. Uh, there, there's, a, <laughs> I think by the end of 17, there'll be a a, a much bigger uh, number of larger brokers that are offering uh, online trading. You can buy the shares online with ShareDeal Active, which is a Jarvis platform. Uh, you can also buy the shares with the Share Center based, based in Aylesbury uh, through their platform. So, uh, And there's a, var- a variety of other brokers on the next exchange website where people can do telephone trades. The key is to get online trading. So the more brokers that come online, the better. And that, that will happen, uh, I think, or start to happen proper uh, by the end of this year. The uh, 
the exchange itself, the rules that they employ are far more conducive to building a business aggressively from a small cap perspective because they don't run the same onerous and completely, in some cases, irrational rules that AIM does with regard to class tests. Uh, so if you're a small market cap company with a small amount of uh, gross assets, uh, then it's very difficult to do acquisitive transactions without causing or triggering a reverse takeover, which results in a massive amount of money going to accountants, lawyers, and uh, technical competent people, uh, and uh, rather than in the ground and pushing the business forward. Uh, because you're constantly tripping these valuation class tests. You don't have the same uh, mechanisms on next. Uh, instead, on next, you have a scenario where uh, you, the transactions that you undertake are tested, as it were, against whether they're a fundamental change of your business, whether they cause uh, change of management control, or whether they cause a change of voting control. And it's far more sensible. So it means you can do a lot more deals. So from a resource pers management perspective, or a resource company perspective, Next is fabulous, very receptive, open arms. From a structural perspective of how you manage the business and whether you can do deals, they are far better than AIM. <laughs> they are open to resource companies rather than closed, uh, particularly those at the early stage of development. And they're really eager to build and grow the business with better online trading and so on and so forth. So I think they are going to be a massive competitor to uh, the AIM marketplace very, very soon. And that's why we're looking, uh, that's why we, we're, you know, we're listed on the next exchange. We, we're going to stay here for a while because if this thing comes off in the way that we think it will, then we'll, we'll definitely want to stay full stop. I went to the Share Awards the other week in London. I think it was 150 million market cap down the way. And I was starting to see yes. you from the next exchange. And it was, that was exactly what I spoke to him about. I said to him, you, you need to make it easier for, for the public to be able to trade. If they had hard greaves or lands down on there, somebody like that, yeah. it would, or Barclays, it would make a big difference to their platform. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I think, you know, without giving too much away, that's going to be happening. But, uh, uh, yeah, if you uh, if you look at the where the, the exchange is now, uh, actually, you can go back eight or nine years when, when I first was getting more proactively involved in the resource space. Uh, the ISDX, as it was then called, or Plus Markets, I think, actually, before that was quite a hotbed for small cap aim. Uh, so small cap aim, small cap resource exploration companies. Uh, and they did rather well, in fairness. Uh, <clears throat> but that seemed to kind of die away for a while. And uh, plus markets became ISDX, became NEX, NEX exchange. Uh, and, but now they, they, they've really started to focus on, on getting the, the liquidity uh, levels up, getting yeah, proper exactly. connections with with the online traders, they've got the right technology in place. They're pushing forward. Uh, I think they're going to be a cracking competition to uh, to the AIM marketplace. And I, I certainly hope they, they become so. so I'd say, well, well, we were actually at the next exchange, our last visit in London, and they've got a brilliant setup in there. So maybe in the future with the likes of yourself and maybe a couple of other companies, you, you might consider doing a show with ShareTalk at the next exchange. Oh, we'd love to. That'd be great. Just, just, just let, just, yeah. just let me know when to turn up. No, no problem. I know what you like. We just to pick up on the cold vault. We published an article. I think it was around the fifth of June on Share Talks websites, and it basically yeah. showed a twenty-four week straight high. So basically, it went in twenty-four weeks from just under twenty-two thousand dollars to fifty-five thousand dollars. And that's how much it's risen, cobalt. Yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable turnaround. Absolutely. No, it's it's been uh, particularly good. You've gone up from uh, uh, probably about one hundred and thirty percent in the last uh, in the last year. Uh, yeah, definitely. And if you yeah. actually, uh, uh, and if you, the chart is is very very impressive. But you're you're always concerned about entering into these things too late when everything's about to 
come you know crashing down. It's what's what's piqued our interest is just the forward supply demand dynamic, which we think makes this quite an interesting scenario for us. And also because even though cobalt is hot in places like Australia, it's not that hot over here yet. And there is a real interest amongst investors uh, who are aware of the lithium uh, cycle and the battery technology uh, situation in, in getting a, an exposure to this. And if we can provide that exposure, it will be fabulous. It's the way the market's going. Like you said, lithium in batteries, it's the electric vehicle. It, you know, it's, that's, that's the buzzword at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So you could be, you, yeah, you could be in a good place, Paul. Yeah, one, one hopes so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for taking time, Todd. And it is actually, it is now, it is 7.20 on a Tuesday evening in the United Kingdom, and you're still in the office. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's going to be this way for a little while, uh, but, but it's well worth it because some of the stuff that we're doing at the moment is fabulous, some of the best ever, and I've signed a few deals in, in my limited time, and some of them have been fabulous, uh, like the MTR Botswana deal, the you know the the, the Thai uh, deal in in MTR, and the, the stuff that we did in the early days with Greatland, and I'm hugely excited now by what's going on. Uh, of course, people won't engage necessarily with that message easily until they see a share price go up five times, uh, but that's life. In the meantime, we are uh, pushing ahead uh, like, uh, like a steam train. I used to come around and visit you guys when Metal Tag was early doors, and obviously I've seen you at the uh, investor shows 2015 and so on. And I, I watched that. I watched that story. Well, I followed it, and I, I watched it unfold. So it'll be interesting yeah. watching this one with you. I hope so. Thanks, Alex. Thanks very much for your time. It's much appreciated. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.